Invoke AI just got a lot better and now you can use your own models. Hello my friends, how are you doing? So I haven't done a video about Invoke AI in quite some time and it has added some really cool features. Of course, let's talk first about how to add your own models. So up here you can see you have all these beautiful icons and the box one, this is the model manager. When you click on this, you are in this window here and you want to click up here on add new. Now, if you already have installed Automatic 11.11, you can point to that folder in there. You don't have to copy the models. You don't have to download them again. This saves a lot of space on your hard drive. So I've pointed this here, as you can see, to my local Automatic 11.11 folder. In there, it's the folder Models and in there, it's the folder Stable Diffusion. Now, when you've done that, you click here on Scan and this will scan the folder for all the models that are in here. One thing I want to point out here is that this works for the 1.x models. So 1.5 is good, but not for the 2.x models. So 2.0, 2.1 does not work, even if it is 512 for the resolution. After all of the models have been found, you see a list down here and you can click on select all. That's probably the fastest way to do that. And then click here on add selected. Now these models are going to be added to this list here. As you can see here, I have quite a lot of models because I'm using automatic 11.11 to train them with Dream Booth. You can see here how to do that or to use the checkpoint merger to mix together other models. You can see in this video how to do that. But we have some extra steps to do here. Because all of these models are 1.5, the base resolution of 512 by 512 should be good. You can also add here the location of the YAML file if your file has a specific other YAML file. Otherwise, Invoke has provided you with different versions of this YAML file. So you can see here it says config stable diffusion. So you want to go into the Invoke folder and here you find the configs folder and in here you find the stable diffusion folder. Now you can see here there is multiple YAML files that you can use. The two most important ones for you is the inference YAML file. Inference is when you create an image and then we have the in paint inference. This is when you have an in paint model. To copy the path, simply right click on the file and then select copy path in here. And then you can copy it in here for this part. Another thing you might want to do is to add a VAE file. This gives you a little bit of a better result and Invoke AI is providing you with such a file. So you can see here in my Invoke AI folder, it is in the models folder, in there in the LDM folder, in there in the stable diffusion version one folder, and there you find a VAE file. This is also a CKPT file like a normal model. So copy that path and put it in here. Now here's a very important bit of information. When you have done these settings, you need to click here on update model first. You can see here you have a confirmation. When you added a VAE location, what you want to do is to load that model again. So if it's already loaded, just load another model and then go back here to loading it again, because otherwise the rendering of the image might not work and you will get stuck. So after you have worked your way through all of the models to do these additional settings and also and always remember to click here on update model so that your change is actually saved. You can close this window and now up here you have a list of all the models and you can simply switch between them by selecting them from that list so it's a little bit faster. Now I want to show you the difference between using a VAE file and not using a VAE file. This image has been created with my own mix of dreamlike and open journey. You can see in this video how I did that. And this is done without the VAE file. It's a pretty good image, but the colors are a little bit muted and also the contrast. Now in comparison, this is done with the VAE file. And you can see, especially when you look here in the face, let's zoom in here a little bit. This has more details and more contrast a little bit. So here you can see both of the files side by side for the face. And next we want to have a look at the armor down here in that area. And you can see with the VAE, the colors are nicer, the contrast are nicer and everything looks a little bit more 3D. 
here you have both of them side by side again. Now, of course, this is not all of the cool stuff in Invoke AI, so I want to give you a little bit of a tour on cool features you should check out. First of all, very important, you have an icon up here that looks like a keyboard. When you click on that, you have all your shortcuts that we have a pretty long list of shortcuts that you can use to just work faster and have a smoother workflow. Next, we have different light modes here. So you can have dark and you can see now the buttons over here are violet. Everything is dark. We have a light mode, which is very nice. And then we have a green mode, which is also dark, but the buttons over here are green. So it is a little bit more classic and reminds me of the alien movies. Next, for everyone who isn't that good in English, we have here choices between different languages, English, Russian, Italian, Portuguese, German, Polish, simplified Chinese and Spanish. Look at these buttons up here, which have some pretty cool functionality. First of all, you have here the info. This will give you all of the info for the image that you have loaded right now. And by the way, you can load different images by just clicking here on the side to load all of the images you have created in the past. You get a long list of all the settings here, which is cool. But then next to it, you also have this button which can recall that part of your information. So you can individually decide to just load the seat or just load the prompt or just load the CFG scale That's very, very useful. The next icon here is for upscaling, where you can select the upscale size, you can select the strength and then simply upscale it. You have here a face restore function. And by the way, I want to give you a little bit of secret sauce. If this is not fixing the eyes correctly, simply click on restore the face multiple times until the face looks as good as you want it to be. Here you also have a shortcut for use prompt, use seed or use all. Then here in the beginning you have the overview, which you have already seen and is very nice to check out the details. You can zoom in here with the mouse wheel to have a better overview of what you have created. And you can simply exit by clicking here on that symbol on the top left. With this link icon, you can send this to image to image to work more on it. You can send it to the unified canvas. You can copy it to the link. This is a local link, not an online link. Or you can download this image into any folder on your drive. Of course, you probably also already know the other functions here like image to image, but this has a specialty, which is very nice. Down here, you can say fit initial image to output size. Did you getting kind of the same ratio? Now a little word of warning here from what I've seen, this is using the resolution of the longer side. So in this case, the long side of the image here is 768, while the short size doesn't have 768. This of course saves on render time, but be aware that you get a smaller resolution than from the square format. A pretty cool trick here is with this starting image, this gives me a base composition. I can now create a lot of characters like this and the images have similar composition. So if you, for example, make a video game, you can easily create a lot of different gaming characters just like that. I have another character and another character and they have kind of the same composition and the head is in the same location of that image. By the way, you can see here with this image that we have here these blue eyes. So let's make it big and then I can click here on GFP and face fix. You can also use code former, by the way, click on restore and you can see that this got a little bit better, but not perfect. So let's just try it again. And you can see now it's getting better, but just try it again. And you can see now that we already have pretty nice eyes. So don't be shy using restore face multiple times on the same face. Of course, here then we have the unified canvas that you can use for out painting and in painting. It is very capable. It has a lot of functions you can see up here. So experiment with that is a really powerful tool. Now, before we go, one thing that I want to point out here is that all the changes you make here to the prompt and the settings, this will carry over to the other modes. So when you change something in text to image, this will also be changed in image to image. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah, I wish you a good weekend.